Okay, part three. Asa Altos server raiding the hard drives. Now, I happen to find a couple of spare scuzzies lying around, so I've put them in drive zero and drive three. The internal SCSI for this is on B at that slot address. The external LVDSE plug, which I showed you in part one, is on that part. So that's for the external array. So if you want to boot it off an external or have separate um, RAID arrays for different users. But anyway, we'll go into the internal one and we'll go to confu view and configure. So this is it here. There it is there. And you'll see here we have two drives in drive 0 and drive 3. Two Seagate 146s. Strangely enough, the size is 147. I don't always trust the raids when they say it's that big. I tend to look at what the hard drive reckons. That's just me. So what we'll do, we'll create two arrays. Uh, and a, we'll start off with building a RAID 0 on this controller. And we'll clear that one and we'll build a RAID 1. What I will say though, very slow to build, so we'll, I'll show you the creation of it, and then I'll show you what to do after it's created it. So let's create a RAID 0, and we go to create, and you'll see here, the 7902 can only use up to four drives in RAID 0. As you'll see here, it cannot, and I don't believe it can even do RAID 10. It can only do that. So there you go. So we'll create a RAID 0. So we simply say that. We select that. Select that. Hit enter. We want a 64K striping size. We'll just call it test for want of a better term. Do we want to make the drive array bootable? Now, when creating arrays on this, you really only want to create one bootable area so you can set up the rest of the arrays individually. So in the case of this one, using two hard disks we will say yes to this and we create the array and we say yes we're sure and that's it build complete and any of you who are good with raids will know that raid zero there you go there just adds them together and it's obviously an optimal status so what we'll now do is delete that array so we say delete we say yes we say yes again now we have two separate drives so this time we will go up to create we'll go to RAID 1 we'll select the two like that hit enter we'll just create a new RAID 1 call it test and we want to make it bootable always and you want to create the array and yes we are sure this will take some time now it's not as slow as the LSI 1030 but it does take a while to synchronize these drives. So we're not gonna go all through that. But basically what would happen is, once it's all synced up, the drives becomes active, you can then go in and install your operating system. So we'll stop the build there, because otherwise we'll be here all night and make the video really, really, really long. So select, uh... sorry about this, I'll bugger this up again. I always get confused. So we'll delete the array, we'll say yes, uh, we'll go back to nothing, and we have two 146 gig drives. As a side note to this, my favourite brand of SCSI, you'll notice, is Seagate. Um, I've never had a problem with Seagate SCSI drives. The IBM Hitachis, I've always had problems. The Sun Microsystem Hitachis, eh, not too bad. But of all my Seagate drives I've had, the SCSIs, the ST3146 series, has lasted me a long time. It's been brilliant. And even now in my Sun server, I am using Seagate. So that's the uh, 7902 SCSI controller. And uh, here you can, you've obviously got your disk utilities here as well. So there they are there. 
and that is obviously the SCSI controller at ID number 7. So that's about it. I'm sorry for it being a three part, uh, slightly disjointed um, profile. As I said, the problems I'd had with this and for the fact that I had completely forgotten about it because what used to happen is, is when I've moved house, I've just put it in a room or put it in a cupboard, plugged a bit of Cat5 into it, plugged a power supply under it, turned it on and left it. And it's just booted. I've never actually had to do anything to this since the day I configured it. And that's some 10, 12 years ago now. Um, it's probably one of the longest servers I've had that has lasted this long. Some of the servers I've had, have, I've been lucky to get two years out of them. This one's kept going. Um, admittedly, my servers, I do a lot of testing, modifying. This one, I didn't bother about it. And um, 12 years of not... This is probably maybe the first, second, possibly third time in three years I've put a screen and a keyboard to it. I haven't even got a mouse for it. What I do like, one thing I did like that caught my attention when I first bought this was the front VGA and USB connectors. Now Dell does this as well. Very handy for people who are going into you know, server rooms where they've got no KVM connected and it's very easy just to carry a screen and a keyboard in if you've got to do some work or a um, keyboard screen and then the keyboard has USB for your mouse. You can just carry it in, plug it up and off you go. I, very handy design and the same with Dell. Um, I will be profiling soon a Dell PowerEdge 6850, Dell's big, I think it's a 4U rack server. It has the same thing. Two USBs on the front, this only has one, and a VGA connector. Very, very handy. Would I buy another one of these? Yes, I would. I would. Um, what would I use it for? Don't know. Now that I've got this one up, I've got to work out how I'm going to repurpose it, obviously. Um, I'm not sure whether this will do virtualization. I actually don't know. Um, the processors might be able to, the motherboard not, might not be. That's the only problem. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Again, apologies that it was over three parts. As most of you who've watched my videos know, I tend to do things in one hit. This one's had to be a three-parter, unfortunately. So, uh, I hope you enjoy. Please like subscribe please like comment and subscribe